changed a lot in my belief systems and my who I am as a person, my confidence. Yeah. Um, and and I believe I am a really good videographer. I'm a really good editor. So cool. I'm a good business person, and I'm growing in that That's still so cool. too. But years ago, I never believed that. You know, so that that in a sense is has changed. Welcome to the From Within podcast with Ben Osterveld. Hey guys, Ben Osterveld here from Within the podcast. We have uh, a guest. His name is James. How do you see your last name again? Demaray. Demaray. That's also Desmarais or something with some really real Spanish one, but. Or it could be Demaray. Demaray. That's better. James, he has a company called Kaza Video Productions. He has been in business for, I don't know, seven, eight years. Why don't you introduce yourself and your business, James? Yeah, so I do video tours. I've uh, been doing it for seven plus years. Uh, not only that, uh, I have the opportunity to travel a little bit of the country um, and do videos for conferences, for people, um, for um, retreats. And then, um, but mainly it's video tours. How many video tours a year do you do? I roughly do in the range of a thousand plus tours. How much equipment do you have? <laughs> Well, that's been uh, growing all the time. <laughs> it's hard to say, but I would say roughly about fifty grand now. Fifty k. Yeah. So this is this this is not how it started, though. No, not at all. No, I think it's why don't we is. why don't we let people know uh, how we know each other, yeah. and then they can have some context. And I'd love to love to talk about how you uh, love to ask you about how you your setup was when you first started. So so. I actually met James, uh, I don't know, randomly, we connected and had James and his wife over probably eight years ago for just dinner. And it was kind of a random connection, nothing really. And then, um, yeah, and, and so eventually James, James hired me as a coach to help him build his business. But why don't you tell your story? Yeah, well, video uh, for me has always kind of been a passion uh, ever since I was young. I've always kind of was interested in the buying a camera. I, want, I had a camera in mind and I did what I could to, sit, to save my money, do the chores when I was a kid and buy a camera. And I remember buying that camera and I was super excited uh, to use it. And so I did whatever I could to make fun stuff. And I remember having to edit on uh, just VCRs from VCR to VCR, I figured out how to make little videos. and. Uh, but really, it, it was always kind of my heart to make videos that brought impact in people and as a gift. So I would make little surprise videos for people and, mm -hmm. and just to really bless them as a person. And it's just it was more of a heart thing, uh, but also creative thing and just trying to figure out what would work kind of thing. So it's always kind of been my uh, my passion growing up. And uh, it's, it's pretty amazing how it's turned into a business and I honestly never believed it could turn into where it is at, you know, kind of thing. But it's uh, um, something I still dream about. I have other dreams of what I want to do with video and all that stuff. Um, but it's really cool that I'm doing it as a full-time thing. I've got guys working for me and and um, and having been in my life has, has been huge kind of thing. And so you're saying, so this is crazy because how many times do we see online coaches, it's like, do you want to take your passion and make it your career? Take your passion and like, and I, I'm a huge believer in it. I just haven't seen many people actually do it. And I'm super, super pumped to see you where you've come. I remember when I, when I first met you, you were an arborist and you were also in some multi-level mm -hmm. businesses and it felt like you were always looking for something. And it's almost like I wonder when, like you're describing when you were a kid, it was very clear, like I really, this is what I want to do in my life. What happened, like where did it go? Like for you to become an arborist, to be in multi-level and to be like looking for the next great opportunity in business when there was something dormant sleeping in you, like when did this passion just go to sleep? I, and think about I other people too, like I'm yeah. thinking, this happens to a lot of people. Yeah. Like how does this happen? Yeah, I think, I think it was one of those things life just kind of went on. You know, you, you go to school, you finish school, you still have this passion inside. Um, in school, I actually uh, did videography as a course in, in high school, and I aced it. Like, it was like... <laughs> of my, course you did. It's what I loved. And so it was easy, it, right? And it was evident. And it was easy, and it was right there. There was equipment to use and all that stuff. So it actually kind of cultivated what I, you know, well, that's good. What I loved. Um, 
but in terms of going dormant, like I just think, you know, like I, I got involved in different things. I did uh, different different trips around the world, you know, whether I was gone for six months or not, just different uh, church kind of trips kind of thing, mission trips and things. Yeah. I always had the camera on my hand. I was always so the cool. guy with the camera. People knew me as that. Wow. Uh, but I never really believed that I could make a lot of money doing it, even though it was a dream of mine mm. to want to be able to make movies. And one of my biggest dreams was to create content film in Hollywood uh, that would bring conviction and change in people and impact. And so as you... As I was sharing before, like that's just that's really how I started doing it, and it's just always kind of been a, resonated in me, and um, and then I just think you know like my life goes on, and you know I got married, and I just didn't believe I could, I had the technical training and the skills mm. to really bring my dream to fruition, and and I was afraid, it was I was a little oh, nervous wow. about it because it's. You know, I, I didn't feel like maybe I was good enough at it and yeah. I would be seen doing it. And yeah. so got into construction, got into arborist work and wow. and that ended up being my life. And I just kind of accepted it. And like, I guess this is going to be my life, you know, and I'm just going to man, just going to do it. Wow. It's like you're just probably people listening to this. They're saying that's me. Mm-hmm. I wanted to fish for a living. I wanted to paint for a living. I wanted to, who knows, be an engineer, and I and I didn't. And mm-hmm. I did what my parents wanted me to. Like it's almost like I look at it as like uh, you keep saying, you keep saying this passion was there. It was nurtured a little bit in school, but I it almost like you kept saying if I believed in myself, if I believed in myself, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't good enough. Was this a narrative in your life that just was like, and how does that affected you? Um, I don't know if, in terms of a narrative, like, I think it's just something I, I, I adapted to myself, um, on my own. And, uh, it, it's like, I had this sense of like, I'm not significant. Um, mm. so, um, but at the same time I had throughout my life, I had all these people share be basically, I grew up in the charismatic kind of church, kind of raise your hands and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It was that's kind of my, my background and, and uh, many people saw something in me and it's like they foresaw something like uh, foresight of, my, of me as a video guy yeah. and technology and all like, prophecy stuff, right? like prophecy and stuff, and stuff. yeah and it, I always got excited about that but so I, they would say I, like they see greatness in you or like what were they saying well they, they would say things like I see you I see you in the area of communications or technology and they didn't know you at all they didn't know me yeah so it's kind of like holy crap yeah and, but for some reason it resonated in me I knew it hit you're like that was me. right yeah yeah. but I didn't know how that was to come about yeah. and and then I found like I tried maybe just I tried to force it to happen wow. or something like that I was I'm looking for the right opportunity that eventually and I would piece things together on my own yeah um, rather than just let it be and just let it rest kind of thing Amazing. And, um, and so, so basically I just, I didn't, I didn't know how it was going to come about. And I think in time when you don't, when you don't do that, you forget and you, and you forget something that you you were passionate Amazing, about hey? and you, then you eventually kind of slowly you do little things. And I remember, you know, we, so I met Ben, like you mentioned, we had dinner at his house and we uh, got into each other's, we, you and I got into each other's life for a little bit. Yeah. And I remember we traveled to uh, Hinton and we were doing a little Crazy. video. Um, that might have been what, eight, nine years ago. Dude, I better of. remember that. Yeah. And uh, I got home. I thought, I'm going to make Ben a little video. And so I made him a little video. I went on Facebook and uh, and I found a bunch of photos, Crazy. a bunch of video, and I made him a he made him a little heartfelt video again and I remember him replying like he was quite moved blew me away and blew yeah. away and so those were just little things I was able to do while I was continuing to work and it was I, almost like it was in your life at a quiet hum like yeah. you just kind of did your video stuff as yeah. a hobby or yeah exactly yeah yeah and it wasn't until um until we really kind of you I think I evolved because at the time I, rem- I like that was a long time because I was just leaving uh, my company or just closing it, shutting it, selling it, cash flow consultants. Mm-hmm. When I and I was moving from being a real estate investor with a ton of investments and a ton of uh, stress and mm-hmm. the crash was happening and 
so I, I retooled and I became a business coach. I started coaching businesses and different people. I, it's when I first started with real estate agents and things. And I thought, and I just was hanging with James and I, and I, I was coaching real estate agents and I'm like, man, there's a huge hole here. Mm-hmm. There's nobody doing video tours, video. We don't, that was not even a thing, video tours. It was like, I thought, well, why don't we do an open house online was the first thought. Yeah. And there wasn't anyone. Like I t- truly believe that you brought this to this city. Like I really do. Yeah. I think there's guys dabbling in it, but you friggin' because now there's like a lot of competitors, right? Yeah. But I truly believe you did. But I remember saying, "Well, I've got rental properties. Why don't you film those right. and actually create a, a video for my rentals?" And I thought, "This is genius. This is going to be so much easier than always taking pictures and all this." And I'm like, "Man, we'll be like standing out," and it worked. Mm-hmm. And I remember you filming my my house there in High Ridge. Yeah. And, and it was kind of chaotic to be honest, but, but yeah. it was, you filmed it with your handheld. Yeah. Just had my, my handy cam at that point. And I remember for filming and you guys were literally, you had, your, you had your family of five, five kids yeah, yeah. and I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And you guys were literally like, we had no clue to yeah. do. We're like, when you turn the camera on, like, geez, that's messy. We got to move that stuff out of the picture and we were moving yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that was, that was my first, very first experience with, uh, doing a, a video tour and, but yeah. I think still at that point, I, there was no real vision of that I would be where I'm at today. No. And that, that's where, you know, I think you saw something mm. in me and we decided to sit together and... Uh, Let's do some coaching. Yeah, do some coaching in yeah. this area. I needed a guinea pig. Yeah. I needed yeah. an extra one. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was willing. So, yeah. yeah, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. But... Uh, yeah, and the journey was cool. Like I think I think one of the big things we started coaching together and and I was, and I and and that was a transition. I actually got my license as an agent and I started really focusing my coaching into just agents like 7 years ago and just focusing. I let go of the other other companies I was dealing with and people and I just absolutely focused everything on real estate as just more of a strategy to be honest uh, and niche out a bit. And and so by doing that, I obviously brought you some business because I would do yeah. the videos and I would pay you to do videos and then and we would meet. I think we we're meeting every couple. You were, do, you were doing all my vlogs, so I would do my YouTube channel. We'd come to your studio, home studio, which is a basement with a curtain or something, and we would do vlogs. So we would meet and it would like we'd meet early at six thirty, coach you, and then we'd do my vlogs and we traded yeah. for many years. That's where all my my video came from. Yeah. So in a weird way. It, it was cool because I got to pull it out of you mm-hmm. and I obviously got my videos done and it was coaching. We had a really cool arrangement for a while. Yeah, it was fun. I, I honestly, those, some of those moments and those days were so fun. Like yeah. not only we would meet in the basement and, and you know, I'd have my homemade lights and all this stuff that, you know, uh, really was, um, like these wash bins and all that kind of stuff that <laughs> you had, you know, it you wasn't had, professional, but it worked. <laughs> you had such a big uh, blockage on your, like, it was about that. It was like your ability. I don't have the right equipment. Mm-hmm. And all I saw is a guy that just needed to believe in himself, to be honest, that had a massive talent. That's how I saw you. Yeah. And I'm like, how can I help pull this out of you? And it wasn't as conscious as it was more intuitive mm-hmm. because we just, I'm like, you got something here. And I'm like, okay, hey, let's figure this out. And, uh, yeah. and, and we went through that, but you're like, man, Ben, I, I, I need equipment. I need equipment. And I just thought with your, the way you were thinking and you were like, I'm like a guy that's like, I don't think I'm enough. You have mm-hmm. this kind of underlining story. And I'm like, you're going to have your confidence in your equipment. Yeah. So I'm like, so I would, why don't you tell that story of how you like, or, or your perspective might be better than my perspective on that. What was it like with like, you wanted to buy equipment? Yeah, I mean, I guess when we were starting, like I, I, uh, I knew what I had. I just had, I just had a little handicap. <laughs> it was HD. It was great, and um, and uh, and then I had no lights and all that stuff. So when I was when I when Ben wanted to do these vlogs, I had to figure out okay, how? I mean, I don't have any budget. I don't have any extra money to go do <laughs> stuff except for a little bit. But because at that time, you know, like I said, I was just doing nine to five labor work and. Um, and so basically I figured out how to make a whole setup, you know, with just using, you know, homemade lights. Literally like yeah. Tupperware containers, light bulbs, was it PVC pipe? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, I mean, I was able to set up a whole a whole backdrop probably for a couple hundred bucks kind of thing yeah. or less. Or, and, um, and so Ben would come in and, you know, not only that, we would like, um, it wasn't only fun with the, it wasn't, 
not only that, it wasn't just content, but it was fun. It was like, funny like too. We had, a, we had a blast. I had, we probably have tons of bloopers. Oh and man, stuff. some like of those we can't show, like, but yeah. But yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's kind of an interesting journey of going from, from that, from the homemade stuff to, to my real gear now. Yeah. You know, I remember my first uh, stabilizer, like that was a, that's a big thing for walkthroughs. You know, that's the slider? No, that's not the slider. Oh, your hands. The handheld. Yeah, thing. yeah, I yeah. Like, oh, man, I wish I could just, I wanted to buy an $800 stabilizer. For but, sure. You know, but I couldn't. And, well, you could have, but I was a bugger. Yeah. Like, I was like, every time, like, I need this equipment, Ben. I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. I just wanted you to, I desperately wanted you to think I'm enough. Like, you're enough. Mm. And, and you were. I knew. I knew it was out there. I knew the videos you were giving me, people were freaking out. Yeah. I already knew it was enough. And you're like, no, I need a stabilizer. I'm like, this looks good to me. You're like, you don't see it, Ben. You're not a video guy. I'm like, well, you, I'm like, you, and I was just fighting you constantly. Like, don't buy nothing. You don't got the money. Don't buy nothing. Yeah. I don't know. You probably just hated that. Well, I was, yeah, I was, sometimes it was frustrating and <laughs> caused me to challenge it. But then I, but what I liked about it, it actually eventually caused me to be creative in, in being innovative and how can I make this work? With what I have or what I can what I can purchase, so I ended up building a literally a, a stabilizer out of PVC pipe and painting it black, and so that it looked a little bit more professional. And I remember uh, walking into my first listing with uh, you know, Jordan Sites, and yeah. I had that there, and I and I, I walked in there, and the owner was there, and I'm thinking to myself, what's <laughs> he gonna think? <laughs> I look like, like an idiot, you know. And you know, it, it's but at the same time, it made me feel a little bit confident too. Yeah, you know, it felt cool to have something, and I created something that I could use, and it actually worked. So there's self-belief being nurtured right there. Yeah. I was confident. I found that, hey, I can do this. It changed that narrative in the head to like, holy crap, what else can I do? Because once you overcome something, mm -hmm. then you can see the hope of like, oh, I could do this again. Yeah. And that's, I love that you say that it brought up creativity. Yeah. Like, because we could just buy our way into everything, but there's something that can be pulled out of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's something that, that's the thing about it about our gifts and our passions laying dormant, it almost needs to be pulled out. It needs to be like, you can't just yeah. wake up and be like, hey, here we go. Like yeah. it was a journey of like nurturing yourself to believe in yourself. Every little minor step forward is like, there I am, I built this, I did this. Mm -hmm. It feels like when you win, after you've done that, the win feels so much greater. Yeah, and I feel like those challenges are key to our growth. You know, if we're totally. gonna try it, and buy our way out of those challenges. We're never going to have an opportunity to discover ourselves in what we can do and achieve. And so, so instead of just even, you know, I'm always kind of looking online for stuff. And I got yeah. dream equipment and whatnot, but not being so hooked on it, you know. And yeah. but just utilizing what I have and and uh, being creative. So I think, um, um, yeah, I think I lost. Friends. No, that's cool. I, I, I totally, I totally love the point. So now let's just uh, jump in for one second. You're now speaking to a guy. Let's pretend you're speaking to a guy. He's telling you, you don't believe in yourself and he's, he has a passion and you're like, well, this guy's really good. Mm -hmm. What would you tell that guy? He's like, oh, I can't do this for a living. I've got passions and I, and you know, he's good. You see it like switch roles. What would you speak to him now today? Yeah, well, I would, um, definitely affirm him in what he's doing and I would say just use what you have and get creative with it and enjoy enjoy the process don't be in such a rush um, mm. because you have so you good. have creativity in you you have a passion in you and it's waiting to come out and so this is now your opportunity and and I want to and I will encourage you on the way and um, and it's okay to don't worry about how you look you know just 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 uh, allow that creativity to come out and just own it, you know, own mm -hmm. it, you know, step in, like for me, like I had to go into some, I did some promo videos for some corporate companies and I, st and, that, and I walked in with wash bin lights kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And inside Can I was a little bit embarrassed, you know, but at the same time I knew I was still making a product for them and I, I, I walked in in confidence. So that's what I would say to someone, just be confident in mm -hmm. what you have and be okay with that because you don't know where it's going to lead you next. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love what you just you said. Just don't be worried about rushing. Yeah, I love that because I just think like I used to be concrete finisher, right? Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, and if you rush the like if you lay the concrete right, you spread it out, you smooth it out. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, though, if you rush finishing it, you completely destroy what you've done. Mm -hmm. It literally will just wreck. Like I couldn't like let's say I was doing a basement, we get it all smooth, right? Mm -hmm. But then you put a machine on it, 
and then it really really polishes the top on the but if you put a machine on top of that because you're rushing it you'll literally just grind up the entire thing it'll just be all a mess again yeah. so i think about there's something very very cool with what you said it's just let it don't rush i think it sets up so in concrete you say it's set up mm -hmm. yeah. so it sets you up yeah. yeah it actually supports you it can support the weight of the future yeah. But we just move so quest. I've got the tendency to do that in my life. I've built massive so fast and there's such a side effect of, of weak foundations. Yeah. And then you're just working twice as hard trying to figure shit out and it's costing you extra money. And like, But if you just take the process of patience, I'm big into that right mm -hmm. now. Just step by step, let it happen. Yeah. I say go hard. Yeah. I think work as hard as your passion will let you. Yeah. But they realize that sometimes the next step, you just got to let that set. Yeah. Just let yeah. it sit. I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's 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 true. And you know, inside you, you know, I think because we live in such a time where we want things to happen fast. For and, sure. And then when you see people you want the hack. It's that a hack. are yeah. successful and doing well at it, you want to be there already. Like you That's just think point. you can get there. Uh, but really it is a process. I've been in it for seven years now and and so it, it and in time flies. Yeah. You know, and so and there's so many treasured moments that I took in those those years that are so valuable to today. You know, like I've I've changed a lot in my belief systems and my who I am as a person, my confidence, um, yeah. and and I believe I am a really good videographer. I'm a really good editor. So cool. I'm a good business person, and I'm growing in that That's still so too. Cool. But years ago, I never believed that. You know, so that that in a sense is has changed massively for me. So not just the skill, but me as a person. And so it's important to go through those slow processes to come to that place, yeah. so that we can really. Because I'm going to keep growing. You're going to keep growing in, in what you do. Yeah. It's a constant uh, evolution of growth. And, and sometimes change ha will happen within that time. But I don't, I've learned not to try and make things happen. Hmm. But just, just go with the flow and just yeah. trust. Yeah, it's like it's massive. Man, I, I remember so many times we've had conversations of like that the side effect of not where you're at today like I just think of how many times that we've had conversations where like I remember I remember you like you wanted to change things so many times mm -hmm. and I'm like well, just give it give it 6 months. I remember that? Yeah, give I it do. 6 more yeah. months. Yeah. Give it 6 more months. Just you're like, "Well, and maybe I want to do videos for like, corporate companies. I want to do all this." I'm like, "Just I said just give it 6 more months." I said you're yeah. gaining traction, you're gaining. And we would do I would do that 6 months, 6 months, 6 months and all of a sudden you're like one of the most one of the most uh sought after videographers in the city mm -hmm. and yeah. our whole plan was to use video shoots mm -hmm. like the business when you when, when that's what we were trying to build is that is that for you it's like you wanted to use video for real estate which wasn't really the core see yeah. once you start moving into your passion it's fun yeah and then you realize oh houses is right. not what i want to film that is a very interesting way you need to navigate that because mm -hmm. how long do you stay in houses right. that's why six more months it was quick you're like okay now i want to do something else i believe in myself I'm like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. if you want to build a business you needed to have that foundation yeah and so i remember having lots of conversations around that like hard to stay in that lane it's so hard to stay in that lane yeah. and uh, but now you're 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 working with a a group that's traveling across canada this conference that's going it's an entire tour and you're flying in you're doing and it's literally your core yes and yeah. and you're doing it yeah while having a business like you just did a for my team you just did a uh, we had a 1.7 million dollar property yeah james didn't film it it was one of his guys yeah. one of his editors and he was literally in the other side of the country filming a project that you like like that just do you think do you realize that like that's what yeah. you just were doing My i don't business think was i really let that sink in like it, it you know i i mean i i could let i'm not quite at the point where i could just be gone all the time for sure but there's points where Man, I can just I can go do all these other things, and my business can keep running, and yeah. and people are still quite happy with yeah. the product. You know, yeah. I've got the editors, I've got shooters that help out, and it's, so it's the systems are coming into place. Yeah. Um, you know, like when I go on these trips, I just I, like you said, like I light up, like it's I, what I want, and, for sure. and when I'm doing it, like oh man, this is this, this is what, what I do, what I want to do, yeah. and. Um, but at the same time, I have to just let that go because I'm still in this journey with, with, my and that's the patience, and, right? Well, yeah. And that's the patience. And because and if without the walkthroughs, you can't do that. Right. Or you could, but there's that leap of faith. And that's why there are some people that do that, skip yeah. the steps and just jump. Yeah. But I feel like, like I've done that three or four times and it works, but it's, there's the thing is you've got a business paying for everything right now. Yes. So yeah. you just need to take care of it now yeah. and then you can travel. Like, it's like, wow, that's the dream. 
Yeah. It's it's so cool. But you wanted to change so many times along the way, so many times, right? Because yeah. you were discovering yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's I remember having those conversations. I felt like I shut you down a lot. Yeah. And I didn't mean to. Yeah. And I felt like you're like, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to do this. I'm like, well, is that the greatest yeah. need to do that right now? Like, I felt like, yeah, it was a lot of years like that. I remember, um, but our relationship is is good. And, and I, like, like, I have James in my will. Like, we have a mm, very good relationship. Right. Yeah. Uh, That's amazing. The thing is, I just see something in you. Mm-hmm. And I know that if I died and you had a chunk of cash, I think you'd do something that would be amazing. Yeah. And I knew that it would go through your heart and your spirit. And I knew that whatever you do is going to make an impact. So when I die, there's some people that I've mm-hmm. set some money aside for in my will yeah. to make sure if uh, it, what happens is they do something with the money that's going to be amazing. Yeah, you know, and I think it's, you know, it's a huge honor to, to, to be in that position. And thank you again. But, you know, like, I think working with you, Ben, has been um, has, ch- has changed my life because you really believed in me, and you not only believed in me, but you took action. Hmm. You know, because I think we can believe in people but not take action and That's encourage people without taking action. But when you actually encourage people and believe in people and take that action to see them and persevere in it, yeah. you see results. And you have truly helped yeah. me, and you see, have seen. With, results like yeah, there's, there's so fruit in, in my business there's fruit in me as a person um, and so it, it, that's been a huge I'm so grateful for that because my it life wasn't so hard to believe in you mm. you I just saw how good you were yeah you just didn't so that part's easy mm. do you, you know what was, do you know what was really hard mm. is coaching <laughs> yeah like when we're rolling it's great coaching around is hard mm-hmm. if you're gonna be a coach that teaches like Here's how you do it, and, and but when you when you really care, it's like like how many times did we challenge? Like we we actually we struggled mm-hmm. in relationship. Yeah, and like it was true. there was a time where there was a couple times we've gone through it, and and the message I have in my heart that with this what we're about to talk about is I really want to see people fight for relationships. Mm. I don't want people to give up on people. Mm-hmm. I feel like unless they're worth giving up on, then dump them. But I'm just saying, like, there's like you're not worth giving up on, and so I remember there was one point we uh, we were coaching, getting great results. It was probably a two two years in, but I started taking a deeper road into personal growth myself, leaving the Christian culture. Yeah. And so, because I grew up in the same kind of culture as you, but now I'm a, way different than I am now. Like I'm just, I'm not, I'm not a, a stereotypical Christian person. Mm-hmm. And that process was me finding Wayne Dyer, mm-hmm. finding other ways of avenues of listening to spiritual growth things. And, and I felt like I was waking up. I'm like, finally, here we go. And I'm going through this process, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, believe in yourself was a weird conversation for Christians because yes. you got to believe in God. Mm-hmm. Like there's this, in, in our subculture, there's that weird like, no, 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 you got to believe in God. I'm like, no, no, you got to believe in yourself. And it almost sounds like sacrilegious to people if they don't understand what they're talking about. Mm. And I think that's what we ran into. Like, yeah. I started to really, like, wake up myself. Mm. Uh, and then there was over a year that we didn't even talk after that. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? We just kind of like, what sure. happened? Yeah. It all, I think there was that moment when we had, it wasn't just the moment. but For there sure. Was, but I remember when we, uh, when I was feeling kind of, um, uh, turned inside yeah. about our relationship because of my beliefs and I didn't feel like it lined up with me or you know um, and then but it caused me to challenge my beliefs too at the mm-hmm. same time and to question it you know like is my relationship with God authentic is it real or is it so just good. because the way I grew up you yeah. know um, and so it caused me to really go deeper in that and to feel peace and be okay with questioning it because I think mm-hmm. so often we're afraid to question it and just we just going to go with the flow um, of how we are in our surroundings, you know, and, um, and so, the, and that, but that to me was challenging, you know, because well, like even like to challenge someone's faith, mm-hmm. that's the ultimate. Yeah. Like that's deadly. Yeah. Like to challenge someone's faith, but if it's not yours, see this conversation used yeah. to scare you. Right. I'm like, well, if it's not yours, what are you doing? Yeah. But the problem was there was some truth there. Yeah. And you're like, like, what do you do? If that's, if it's not yours, then what? Yeah. That thought is very hard for people to understand, but that thought will lead you to depth in the relationship that you want with God mm-hmm. or depth with relationship with yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you never, if you never challenge it, mm-hmm. then it's just what you were told. Th- yeah. Those conversations yeah. that scared people. Yeah. It still does today. And I, and I appreciated having, getting into these, 
aspects of truth uh, because it really did affect affects everything it affects my business it affects my relationship with my wife mm-hmm. and all this stuff so I think it was important to go through this because of, of self discovery and you know for me like I I believe in God yes I believe in Jesus yes those are my core things yeah but I wanted you know it but well, how real was it and even so how good. real is it today so you good. know and um, it's not about cha- changing your faith it's about just knowing if it's yours right I don't care what your belief is yeah. is it yours like yeah. I'd like to ask the question the guys that flew into the towers Right. Was that your belief system? Mm. Was it your faith? Mm-hmm. Or was it something that was adopted? Right. Same yeah. question. Yeah. This isn't a Christian thing. Yeah. This is a human thing. Yeah. Is what you believe yours? Yeah. And if it isn't, what are, the, what are the results of that? Right. Yeah. So this here, what we're talking about, I think scared the shit out of you for a bit. Yeah. Well, it did. <laughs> it did. And it caused me to question that. So yeah, like, like this scared. guy's not a good dude. Yeah. It was almost felt like that. I'm like... Yeah. It wasn't even a, it wasn't even aggressive or nothing. It was just that we just kind of it felt a little bit like we grew apart. Yeah. It was just like a subtle like oh we're not really hanging out we're not coaching anymore and yeah. But then then what happened? So we 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 reconnected and this is a story about our relationship that's mm-hmm. really cool because it's an example of of how people can be together and, and have deep relationships and mm-hmm. not be in the same belief system in the, in some level and 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 to have relationships and yeah and and so yeah we reconnected. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if it was just friendship for a while, but we started coaching again. And uh, you know, you remember? Yeah, I think. I mean, I, I think we're probably sitting in the second cup coffee place, like where we would sit every week, like we like yeah, back every, in the yeah, day. Yeah. And then we so we reconvened at the coffee shop, and yeah. and I think we just had a really heart to heart talk, and I just from that point, honest, yeah, tears, tears, like we've had many tears. Yeah, um, there's there's even I, there's even a point where. I got so frustrated. I think I walked up and left, but then I came back. <laughs> but most of this moment, and yeah. that's because I was just, that's because I was being really challenged. Yeah. But like I said, like, like you, you've always been someone that I really felt like you listened and you heard. Mm-hmm. And I think you were also going through your own process totally. too, as, as totally. a coach and all that stuff. And, and, um, it, but those challenges that brought me, brought question, helped me to question things. Uh, I appreciate it eventually kind of thing because it brought yeah. it actually brought a certain level of truth that I needed because because most often when these when we're asked these questions we want to avoid we want to mm-hmm. avoid the real true answer rather than um, uh, because we just want it now or something like that yeah I don't know I don't know there's a there's a comfort in not looking at the stuff that's bothering you right just ignore it it feels good it's like wait yeah who cares eat the cake yeah just ignore that you've gone up 20 pounds you can keep ignoring that Mm -hmm. or someone can say hey you're getting fat what's going on yeah that's not an easy conversation right but people that deeply love you yeah will talk to you about that yeah and if you have that relationship that's right built with permission you can have that you can have that type of honesty with one another kind of thing and i think that's what and that's, that's what we the, have. It's weird because to, to have a lifelong real connection where it's deep, I do believe that. Like, I really believe you challenge each other to be better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You challenge me. And we've got some other stories we can probably bring up. But there's one thing I want to talk about is your name of your company. Mm. So what is it again? Uh, it's Kazaa. Uh, video Productions. Spelled, uh, yeah, Video Productions, C-H-A-Z-A-H. Let's talk about how you named your company. This is a really cool moment of, of that you owned it. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, we were, you're always trying to think about a name that strategically makes sense, right? Why don't you talk about how you named your company? It's a really cool story. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I remember when, like, cause we were already were functioning. I was already functioning doing video tours, but I didn't really have a name at that point. Uh, and I, and I, um, would go through different, I would go through a list. I'd write a list <laughs> of names down and, yeah. and, and I always, and, and even when I would say the names, I'd always look for people's reaction. If that was cool or not, I was looking for people's affirmation more than my own, my own sense of like, that's the name kind of really thing, right? cool. And so, yeah. um, and then I remember I was reading in a book actually years ago. Um, and, uh, and there was that definition of, uh, cause uh, it's actually Shaza, uh, but it's, uh, pronounced kaza um and it, and it means to see things before they occur kind of thing and i felt and when i read that i'm like that's going to be my business name the, right yeah. there uh, because because it's really what it is like you you know you see a vision and you create you create a product from it and then all of a sudden it's manifest kind of thing right so that's and, and so i knew that was going to be the name and i remember sitting with you having coffee and you really felt it like well you like, you dropped the name yeah 
And I knew that was your heart, dude. Yeah. I knew it described you to a T and it was the energy that you were talking to me about it and the whole thing. It was just like, there was not a doubt in your mind. You're like, I got it. Yeah. And we're like, and I'm like, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. it's not, I wasn't approving it. I was just saying, yeah. I'm just saying, I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that's money. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's funny because it, the name itself doesn't identify it's not an obvious yeah. scene, video tours video thing. and and so i had people challenge me it's like well you should have a name that's a little bit more obvious to your industry kind of thing so people yeah. can know right away that it's that i was like no this is my name this is what it's going to be and eventually yeah. it'll be it'll become something that people will just know yeah kind of thing and i think that's where it's at why well, I, I you sound all confident now but i remember you coming saying you want to change it right <laughs> you're like yeah. you're like Oh, you know what? I've come up with another name, Ben. And I'm just looked at you and I'm just like, like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. This is that you, you have never, you were so aligned. This was aligned. Mm -hmm. Right. And a name, to be honest, doesn't really matter. Right. Like at the, in the business, you can have like, what's Apple? Like it could have been called orange and right. still did the same thing. Yeah. What I'm saying though, is it meant something to you and you are the culture and you're the energy that you are the business. And, uh, yeah, like you were not, and it was, you were like not a follower. Like you'd always look at other people, like even in the beginning, you're like, oh, there's this guy, he's my competitor. He's got like such nice stuff, what he's doing. Man, I need to, like, I think he's got better equipment than me. I think he's even a bit cheaper. I see him, I'm like, mm -hmm. and it's like, we all do it. Yeah. And I, I don't on purpose because I can still yeah. get into like, well, that coach, there's always a better coach. Yeah. There's always a better real estate agent, better business person. There's, there's always a better person. Like, there's always better. Mm -hmm. Everyone's in process. So I always always say, no, nope, your handicap. You screw that, man. Do yeah. your handicap. Keep it going. Yeah. And I could try to hold you there as long as possible until you start yeah. actually making some big dough and buying real cool stuff. And then I'm like, okay. Yeah, well, I remember talking to a guy. He's actually another guy in, in the real estate or in the photography world. He said, you know, get good at just using what you have. Also, uh, he said... What if, if, if you just had a bottle, ca like, a bo like a glass bottle for a lens, you know, don't let that stop you from being creative. And I always yeah. remember that, you know, yes. like, and just it's use beautiful. what you have. Yeah. yeah, it's so good. So, yeah, the name thing is that you own it, and that's what it is today. And, and yeah. you could have changed it, but because of what other people thought. Right. And, and it's just so cool that you stood by that. So you remember the time you'd call me? I remember you started growing. Now, this is really cool. This is just business, okay? Mm -hmm. You, you're, cre you're a creative person. You didn't start by designing a company. And so this is, I'm more like that. That's why I teach people how to build a business yeah. to support their passions and all that. And the thing is though, I remember you were getting really busy. Mm -hmm. Like you were hustling, but you were also editing. You were doing everything, head cook and bottle washer. Like that's what you say. Like you were serving clients, you were serving the tables, you were dishwashing dishes. Like you were doing everything. Invoicing was brutal. Like people were like not getting, like you get an invoice for $1,500 for the, you know, six months of work walkthroughs or whatever it was, right? And it was just crazy. And, and but you were just, that's growth. You're exploding. Everyone's wanting James. And it was amazing. And what was fun was, a, was you get that, that praise mm -hmm. people were like oh you're amazing so doing the videos is fine yeah. and it's but and then editing's fine but you started not being able to do it mm -hmm. so i was like you need to hire you need an editor you know, at least one editor and it was like and yeah 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 i'm okay here's how you do it go on to like upworks go to these different places and try to interview some editors and he just wouldn't do it mm -hmm. and he just kept driving yourself to busy and i'm like you just wouldn't do it you're not the only guy yeah. everyone i coach does this mm -hmm. and they just don't hire because like why you tell me why didn't you hire what was going on where you didn't it's just like now that you know how to do it mm -hmm. it took you literally what 40 hours no with sleep like it probably took you like about four or five hours to find them all in yeah, yeah. like not even <laughs> like it's like an hour's worth of work you got an editor yeah now let's work yeah really so now that you know that yeah why did you wait six months and almost cracking before just hiring someone i don't know it's a question i mean i think it's just I was in such a flow of doing what I was doing and uh, I think I was afraid to let go to and trust someone else to do what I was doing mm. and also maybe some lack of confidence in training someone I don't know like because you know, I have or at the time do I have time to train someone so good while I'm doing this and you know and I did you know and how long is it going to take for me to find the right person and are they going to be consistent are they going to be all this stuff and um, and so I think it just I don't know. I, 
the, it's like the business owner side of me wasn't quite there yet. I was yeah. like the worker. Like For I sure. had a business, but all I did was work. Like and and, and you, what do you do? Say, and plus, let's talk about this. Another thing that you, the reason why you didn't hire an assistant, because you were the best at saying no, right? To jobs. <laughs> uh, I eventually became I'm better at saying no <laughs> so you would just say yes 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 yeah. and remember I, I tried forever to get you to take one day where you'd work on your business I oh. still don't know if you do that but I'm like just work on like don't do video walkthroughs for one day Yeah. because I knew it would force you to hire someone to do the walkthroughs Yeah. and you could work on your business and that's hard it's so hard and that's why people burn out and die right. and then all of a sudden all those yeah, all those times you said yes to these people what happens is you're going to have to say no to all of them eventually. Yeah. And it's going to be like you say no to 2 or say no to 10. Yeah. Because you're going to be crashed. Yeah. And I think that's honestly what happened too <laughs> like I mean um I have the you know I found the editor, you know, and to this day he's still working with me. Four, yeah. year, four years now, I think. Yeah. Like, so it's three years in the business that I, that I got someone. That's right. And uh, it's funny. Him and I, have, to this day, have never chatted. <laughs> never <laughs> met. Never met. Never you chatted. Know, he's, just, from the, he's just from the States, and he just he does his thing, and he loves it. and Just it, banks him out. But, you know, and so that relieved and, a lot of But now of you have a second editor. And now I have a second editor. Who's, who's, who's become, become our friend, actually. actually. <laughs> a really good friend of ours, and... It, on the opposite side, yeah. and he's he's a genius at what he does. And yeah. I think there's I think when the Hollywood stuff shows up, yeah, he's the V's guy. gonna be there with with us yeah. wherever we go. V's coming with us. <laughs> That's what we yeah. feel like. We've got this little, we got a crew going or something. We're all doing different things, but there's something. This guy's special. So yeah, no. It's, by the way, no one. Good. We're not gonna tell anyone who he is. Just so you know, we oh, well, we might have to. Yeah, yeah. You might have seen some of his. Uh, his, his birthday, birthday videos. Songs. <laughs> the guy's just the, the guy's a real amazing, uh, amazing guy. That's just the absolute truth. He's probably listening to this as we're because he edits this for me. But uh, just uh, keep blushing, keep working hard. Anyways, anyways. So, so yeah, so I I got the editor. So eventually, so I only had the one editor, and eventually, yeah. you know, time in time, I got busy again. And you well, I would, I saw it at a huge risk. Yeah. I saw it as like imagine your one editor going down. With Which, with you yeah. going crazy, still working, yeah. now you've got to go back to editing. I'm like, hey, strategy wise, you need a second editor. Yeah. You need to have some security yeah. in your business. I'm just a business strategy guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey, you need a second editor, which costs you nothing because you only pay for the work they do. So right. you have five of them. Right. Like for me, it was like, just do that again. Yeah. Took forever again to get the second one. Yeah. You know, I did experience that. There was times where my editor would be gone for a week. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm doing, because I would be filming four or five, at that time probably four hours. Yeah, now you're working full time filming. And and so, um, and so yeah, filming all day and then editing all night and then yeah. again and again and again. Um, and so that, so I, so yeah, I eventually realized, okay, I got to find it. Actually, I was looking for an, an editor for some photos I was doing. Yeah. And then you found them. And then Velomir came up yeah. to do, to do photos. And then I said, do you do video by chance? He's like, are you kidding me? And so, yeah. then, then the rest but, is so the point is, so the point is, is that we are get, you were getting crazy busy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, we're they're, they're, People are getting a look into how the process went for you to start putting in your business systems and getting the people around you and. But the fact is that that's so hard for people. But what happened to you was you got so burnt out. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing where I think about someone listening and it's the business owner listening, a real estate agent listening, and they're sitting there going, I'm doing everything. I don't trust someone to do my stuff and all this. You, there was a point, the cost of that w was so potentially devastating to your company because you, there's been two, mm -hmm. two significant times at least mm -hmm. that you came to me where you were about to sell your company mm. in a deal. Right. Why don't you talk about that? Yeah. Were you thinking clearly? Yeah, well, there was, that's a good question. Like, um, I, there was an opportunity where a company came up to me at, in, locally and asked if they could uh, buy my company or partner with me, or I could partner with them, basically. I would just take everything to them kind of thing. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, anyway, and they, and they were really good Good talkers and good it's people. Good people. Yeah. And uh, to this day, I'm friends with some of them still. So, uh, and it was just one of those things where I was actually contemplating. You know, like you know, maybe I should do this. You you and would actually were down the road, dude. Because, I remember you calling me kind of oh, near, yeah. near the signing almost, and, oh, I'm, yeah. and I'm like, it's. I felt like that gut feeling. I'm like, there's something. 
Let's like, and it's like, yeah, I kind of went and did this. But it was weird because you knew what I would say. Because I didn't chat with you. About <laughs> yeah, it first. I'm like, usually you <laughs> chat with me, and I'm like, I'm like, you just know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I um, ended up meeting with these guys, and um, I almost went to the end and realized um, this is really not what I want to do. Uh, you know, yes, they had all the ad- admin stuff taken care of. There's a bunch of systems that I don't yeah. didn't have. Don't yeah. have that would have been a huge relief. And actually another big part of it was community. Like, yeah. cause, there, cause uh, I wanted to be around people more uh, and build a relationship. I think through people. us chatting, we, we uncovered that source. Yeah. It's like, well, I just, I'm just, I wanna have someone, I wanna partner. Yeah. I remember we're chatting about this and it was like, why do you want this so bad? It, yeah. Like legitimately you could hire an assistant for 18 bucks an hour and right. have all your systems run. Why are you selling your company to a company and you're paying them and you're bringing your 800 to 1,000 walkthroughs to them? I'm going, how is this deal happening and why are you doing it? And we would just dig into it and it was like, I just, I just, you're alone all the time. You're really interesting, right? Like you yeah. were just alone yeah, all the time. So. So yeah, like that was that's where we. So it wasn't just like oh yeah, it was just because I needed community. It was like, yeah. it's like oh, that was an underlining motivator mm-hmm. to make major decisions on your business, which yeah. I call a self sabotage, because mm-hmm. you're trying to solve something personally. Yes, that was for your business. Mm-hmm. Like you're like oh, my business can. So anyways, talk about that. It's huge. That's such a cool. So much learning that went through that. Yeah, I mean, I think. It was a huge learning curve for me. Um, it was very stressful for me too at the same time. Um, I th- and I think, I think there's a lot of valuable things in it that I learned that is important to me too. Uh, um, realizing who I, what, what I already had and what, and, and what I've already established. So it's, it caused me to reflect even deeper on that. And because um, I was sought after, I guess, in yeah. that circumstance. And I thought, oh, wow, like this is, this is a cool opportunity. And I always tended to be an opportunity-driven person. So totally. when an opportunity would come, I would want to jump on it. Um, yeah, opportunity and, you know, decisions versus like being purposefully going intentional. This is what I want. Yeah. Was, Let's see what happens. Yeah. And then you would just kind of take opportunities all the time. Yeah, yeah. And, re- and I realized just because an opportunity might seem really good doesn't mean it's the right decision. You know, even though it might seem like grandiose and all that stuff, don't let that be a, a decision maker, you know. Just because like, the opportunity shows up, make sure yeah. that it aligns with what you truly yeah. want yeah. and your mission in life. And right. what, so that needs to be defined as well. Yes. Like that's what a lot of people don't do. And that, a lot of the work I do with like the retreats that I run, as obviously you know that you've been on every one of them, yeah. uh, is that we just figure out what do you want? Yeah. Like that's the question. What do you want? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. they, they don't know what they want, so they just run around taking opportunities, and then they burn out, and they just have relationships, and they say like they don't know what they want. Yeah, I don't think and so. We need to. We spend a lot of time talking about that, yeah. but it's really interesting. What did we discover? Like, what did you discover when it came to community in your life, and how? What was how was that playing out? Uh, and, well, and how did you solve it? Well, basically, yeah, I realized that uh, if I were to go that direction, um, I, you know, there's a certain element of community that I thought was there was a perception of community I thought would be there uh, in business in, in, in that business uh, aspect yeah with these people and but realizing you know like that's not the reality you know this is just business and, and it's not like we're going to be hanging out every day uh, filming together because that's still an individual yeah job. you'd still be alone I'd still be filming I mean I <laughs> with I, I still I mean I'm not I'm alone but I'm not alone like I'll, yeah, I'll meet course. with you as the of realtor course. and I've to this day I'm um, working with some people when I started you yeah, know, like yeah, seven yeah. years. So I have built relationship with definitely. People. It's not, but it's not outside of work usually. Um, but I did realize I I'm a person of, like I love community. I think we all are hungry for community and, oh, connect, yeah. and connection. And when we don't have it, um, you know, it's just like we're searching for it. And um, but yeah, so I think so I let that go and it felt really good to let it go and say, no, this is not the right the business. The, the business, the, the guy that wanted to buy <laughs> yeah. your or a partner, partner bring, yeah and then yeah that happened and then he came up to me again a year later kind of thing and um but it, but thankfully i mean i've been able to, because of that i realized um how important community is to me i went and found community and now i'm in a very strong outside of work outside of work yeah and i found a really great group of people that i just love I'm developing a relationship with them and it's just a, it's cultivating and so that that's being fulfilled in that sense so then so by fulfilling your relationship personally in your community mm-hmm. now you don't need to get it out of your business right yeah so I, I that's so cool i see a lot of real estate agents actually build a community within their brokerage but they hate being there 
and it's too expensive for them, but they stay mm -hmm. because they don't want to lose a community. And I think that's actually a tactic that a lot of brokers use. Yeah. You know, like do barbecues and do this, and they, that's good. They want to build a community. But the thing is, why pay 15 to 20 grand for a community? Why don't you make a business decision? Yeah. What's the best place that you need to be? Make that decision and find a community that's free. Yeah. You don't need to pay to have part of a community unless your strategy, right? You become a, you pay 20 grand to be part of a very high end mastermind group or, mm -hmm. or you want to be part of a community that way because that's business as well though, because yeah. yeah. you're looking to leverage that. Yeah. But, but uh, communities you don't have to pay for. Right. Yeah. And you almost cost you your company yeah. to find a community when you had one right there for you. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And so, so yeah, the better decision was keep doing what I'm doing and just, and also it's, it felt like it was going to be the easier road mm. rather than me having to find the, find the admin, train them, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so there was a part of me just think, okay, this would be easier. It's like a sense of relief in a yeah. sense rather than, uh, but potentially again, avoiding it's, it's the, but avoiding and being okay with the long term game too, you know, like, yeah. Um, so, and then there's that one time, you know, where I felt the sense of real business when I went on your, we went to I know. Connecticut together. Yeah, and we I, flew down to Connecticut. At that point, I had an assistant, I had sh the shooters going, and yeah. I had the editors going. So it was all you literally had it done while I was gone for oh. for the week, and it felt amazing. You know, that yeah. to me it was it was incredible. Like I I don't have an assistant right now. And we're off gallivanting. Like, yeah. We're filming. You're, yeah. that was awesome, man. Yeah. So that's that's the place where I want to be. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the challenges that I'm facing in, in is people, uh, I've got so used to working with me Yes. Uh, that they want me to show up. Right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. How, so I'm, but I need to be okay to just let that go. Well, you know what? And, it's an art. Yeah. Like I, I have, how many, how many people want to deal with me as an agent? I don't, I've sold mm -hmm. four houses this year. Yeah. Our team has sold 110 so far. Wow. Yeah. So we found a way to do it. Yeah. You have to, the handoff on the relationship is something, and I have to work at that. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes like, hey, go get it, and then they would lose a deal. So you learn. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, yeah. big deal, you lost a deal, it freaking yeah. cares. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, though, what we've learned is that the handoff is getting really good. Just takes a little bit more of my time. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to do that, yeah. but I had to. Like, just the other day, I'm sitting with a client of mine, and... I'm passing it off, but I can't just pass it off because a relationship has to be passed off. So this is an art. You got to work mm. at it, figure it out. Yeah. But it's but how does everyone do it? Right. Every every other business that ever started, a plumber was a plumber till yeah. he had ten crews. Yeah, that's right. Then he has a business. Yeah. It's like at what point you just got to figure that out. Mm. What's the best way to hand it off? Mm -hmm. And it's again a personal thing as well because if you do it confidently, mm -hmm. be like yep. Yeah. And but the, can I tell you what it is? What well, the biggest thing for me is this. The right people. Yeah. If you don't have the right person that you can trust to hand it off to, that's the problem. Yeah. Like, like if if like if if, if like it's almost like uh, you're like a video guy that's just freaking amazing with people. They know he's got charisma. Walks in and everyone loves him. Mm -hmm. How easy would that be? Right. Yeah. It'd be sweet. It's the person. Yeah. So a lot of times we hire the wrong person and then we don't trust that person. Yeah. So then you need to fire them. Mm. Find someone that you can trust. Yeah. Cause then it's like done. Yeah. This changed everything for me. Yeah. You find the right people, and it's like, oh, that's way easier. Yeah. Like I've had other team members that were, I had to always babysit. Yeah. Just hire the right ones, and, and maybe give them a little bit more money. Yeah. Like it can be as simple as that. But anyways, I, you're in mm -hmm. process. I'm in process. Yeah. Um, no, honestly, James, it's been it's been a really really cool ride. I consider you one of my absolute best friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't coach together anymore, but we are, we are friends. We've gone through a lot of ups and downs in our relationships because we were both strong and, uh, stubborn at some times. And, yeah. and you caught me on the way up learning how to coach a bit better. Mm. I feel like I'm, I'm about 10 times more polished from the first day. I was kind of like your, your, I was the handy cam guy. Yeah, I, I coach you. I get results, but yeah. it might be a little rough around the edges. Yeah, yeah. I still got results and today. Today it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot more different as my confidence even rises, mm. and as yours rises, and it just you just walk in and you just know what's you just know. Yeah, it's a knowing. It's not like okay, I'll give it a go. Yeah, you know, okay, I'll, I'll get creative. How do I do that? No, I just know. Mm. You just become no maturing and stuff. Anyways, James, we are close to the end of the time. Any final words that you'd like to say? Any thoughts to close out this? awesome podcast together yeah well i think i mean it's so great to be here uh, to be able to chat about our story and uh and i just think anyone that's listening you know like you have we all have a passion we all have desire that has been given to us to to i believe to pursue 
And I think as we just, you know, look at those things and just step out one step at a time with those and trust that that could be something that could be part of my life. And um, whether it's a career or, or just something that brings joy to you, you know, um, I think it's important to, to, to take a look at that and begin to believe in yourself in those areas because that'll change your life. And it's not just about your life changing. I think it's about impacting other people with mm -hmm. what you have. And so I think that's ultimately my heart as a videographer, as someone that's creative, is not just for myself, but just to also for other people. The impact. Yeah. It's beautiful, James. We're gonna wrap it up, man. Thanks so much for being part of the show, man.